Yo, what's up guys? Evan Warp here for the second tutorial on the program called Sony Books Wobble. And um, this one I'm going to do an in-depth look at the pattern generator and how you can kind of create a pattern. But uh, yeah, let's get started. By default, you're going to want to turn it on. Click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and reset all my settings so I can be the same as you guys. But yeah, you can reset the velocity, reset the glide and all that stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and reset all. And If I play my MIDI clip, you'll notice this is going along and there's no notes being played. The reason for that is there's no velocity down here. You can control the velocity by just clicking on it and dragging different values into it. But for my loop right now, I think it's only going through eight steps because I have a two bar loop. Therefore, or a quarter divided by two is eight different steps. And that's what it's covering right now. It's going up to about here. And if I want it to go up to more, I have to change this right here. I'll change it to go by eighth notes, which it'll read the sequence a little bit quicker. And that's just pretty much reading all those steps right there. And you can make it go by quicker if you change this up higher. And all that's going to do is read the sequence quicker, which most likely isn't going to be what you want. You're probably going to want to keep it around a quarter note. And since I have two bars, it's only going to read eight steps. So I'm just going to put it down to eight steps, which is about that far. And I'm actually going to um, turn all the velocity up so all the notes have about the same sound. But yeah, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this LFO rate. That's what this is right here. The LFO sync, I mean. But um, this is what's going to have uh, quarter notes, eighth notes, whatever type of speed you want your wobble at. And I'm going to just go ahead and throw some different things out here so we can kind of hear what different LFO rates we can have in this. Go ahead and play this. And as you can see, it's not really going to have notes that appear right here that tell you what you're dragging this value to. But that's alright. Some programs don't. I wish it did, but got to deal with it. So I'm just going to... Uh, eh, We'll just keep a pattern like that, nothing too special. It sounds kind of weird right now, it's just kind of choppy, so I'm going to mess with some of these different filters and see if we can make the sound a little bit better. And this is the filter for channel 1, which is one of these knobs. It doesn't tell you specifically which knob it is, but it's one of these knobs that we can change the value of throughout the MIDI clip. So I'm just going to kind of drag it down. We'll see how that sounds. And as you can see, it's not really doing much. So I'm not really going to mess with that much more. You can kind of play with that and see what the different values of the, f of the filter can do to your sound. But it does different things, the different presets in this program. So you just kind of got to mess with that. Also, with this um, pattern generator, you can um, disable or enable different of these filters. Like, see this channel 1 filter? See, I didn't want to mess with that, and I just wanted to keep it to the original preset of what Sony Vokes had in mind when they made it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off Channel 1 Filter. So I'm just going to go to this tab Enable and go to Channel 1 Filter. It's right there. And I'm going to disable it. So click on there and it turned purple and that means that that is off and I can mess with it and it's not going to do anything to the sound. So let's play this again and see if it... As you can hear, it's 
back to the normal setting. And you can do this with all these different ones, the width, and all those different type of things. But the one thing I have yet to um, know about this program is this intelligent rhythm control. It just kind of messes with the sound, it kind of goes by a bar, if it keeps repeating over it, it'll drown out the note. But yeah, I haven't really messed with that too much, so I can't really talk about that too much because I don't know much about that area in this program. But yeah, that's pretty much everything for this. Like I said, you're going to have to mess with these different filters and get a different sound for the preset that you picked. But um, yeah, that's pretty much the basic for the powder generator. Make sure you stick around and I will be talking about the effects section next. And make sure you like this video if it helped you out. And check out some of my other videos. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Peace.